What's up guys, Leg Day here to explain another Overwatch League expansion team for 2019 so you know exactly what to expect as we move into the season in February. Today, as you've probably guessed from the video title, we are going to be covering the Vancouver Titans, previously known as Runaways. The whole team has been transplanted wholesale into Overwatch League from their Season 2 Contenders win in South Korea. As usual, we're going to get started with the tank line. It's going to be Bumper and Janu. These guys have been working together for a little while, and one thing about Runaway as a team is that they were very meta-resistant. They played across a plethora of metas, including Dive, and of course, the now infamous Free Free that's likely to still be in vogue as we begin the Overwatch League 2019 season. So Bumper, he can play the Arissa, he can play the Reinhardt, and he can play the Winston, but his strongest tank here is definitely the Winston. He's got some great sense as to how to execute dives, and Janu's definitely at his best when he's on the Diva as well. So I feel like together they are going to be very much more suited towards those dive metas, but the synergy is obviously a big asset when it comes to pulling out those 3-3s. Three and speaking of dives of this tank line, Janu has a secret weapon in his back pocket for Wrecking Ball. His is one of the most proficient Wrecking Balls that we've seen across all of Overwatch, so that may well be a, a back pocket weapon that Vancouver Titans can occasionally call upon to surprise an enemy or potentially counter out a composition they feel would be best dealt with with a little bit of pile driving. Overall, I'd rate this tank line very highly, not only for their synergy with each other, but for their synergy with the remainder of the runaway core that is now Vancouver Titans as well. They are very adept, appealing for their backline, because they always know where they're going to be. These guys have been playing together for so long, they know all the little micro movements, what angles players will like to take, etc. When it comes to knowing your support positioning before having to leap over to them, and that's so important. Of course, you can always look and see where the supports are, but saving those crucial milliseconds where you have to check and you just know is what can make the difference between a successful peel and your backline being slaughtered. Moving on to DPS, it is for Devilish Duo who have been playing together since 2016, Haxal and Stitch. And well, these guys gained a lot of notoriety in the dive meta for their combination of Genji and Tracer. Haxal's Genji, showy, flashy, always impressive, whereas Stitch, always there with a reliable hitscan presence on the Tracer, and he's recently expanded his hero pool to include the Widowmaker as well, to quite a fair degree. I wouldn't describe Stitch and Haxal as potentially being owl topping level of dps like say profit bird ring pine or maybe libero but they definitely are reliable and once again synergy is where these guys are really going to excel and while synergy may be an important weapon in the arsenal for vancouver titans dps line flexibility is another one haxel has got a load of great heroes they can pull out including a fantastic Genji, as we mentioned before and a very good Farah. I feel he'd be able to go toe to toe with a lot of the Farahs in the Overwatch League and still come out on top, especially considering how well he would work with his Mercy in Slime. And Stitch can bring out a load of heroes. Not only that, but Vancouver Titans do have two players on the bench in the DPS role to fill out any little nooks and crannies that may require a little bit more specialization. And finally, we'll move on to the support lines, Slime and Twilight. Slime, he's, uh, he's actually very much impressed me when I was researching Vancouver Titans. He, uh, his Lucio during the Contenders Season 2 Finals against Kongdu Panther I felt was a wonderful mix between not only being a reliable help to his team with his speed boost and his healing, but also he had the ability to go clutch when needed, including basically clutching out an entire fight on Ilios in the last map of the Finals. The guy can deal with pressure so well, does not choke at LAN. And that reliability cannot be underrated when you're looking at a long season where everything's on LAN and every match will eventually count when it comes to your final standing in the league and and your division. Not only is Slime Clutch, but he's also flexible, having shown the ability to move over onto the Mercy and the Zenyatta should it be required for a dual flex support setup. And having that flexibility over the course of an Overwatch League season where you may play through many different metas and have to take advantage of many different heroes in a pool could be a great asset to Vancouver Titans. Twilight is another example of both a reliable and flexible support in the line for Vancouver Titans, having had great performances on the Zinyata, the Moira, and the Anna as well, so definitely know that you can count on him to bring any of those out at a moment's notice for Vancouver Titans, but I feel like Twilight, while he is reliable and of course flexible as I mentioned before, he doesn't really have as much star power as some of the other flex supports that we see in the league, like Jonak, like Badoshin, where we really consider them fragging powerhouses or basically third DPS players. I think Twilight's more of like the reserved, capable healer that Runaway can rely on. 
But when we talk about supports with fragging power, we've got to take a little look at the bench that we've got here for Vancouver Titans, because they did pick up one player that was not from Runaway, and that's Repel, formerly of Element Mystic. And this guy, he is a fragging powerhouse. When you get him onto Matt Zignata, this could really pick up a lot of slack, should Vancouver Titans have trouble getting as much damage as they want out of that flex support position. I think this was a great pickup for them. But the thing is, Repel will not have as much synergy with Slime as Twilight would, which could mean that he finds himself in more vulnerable positions or less able to get the effective peel that people can usually count on when they've been on a team for a year or so. Lastly, we have DPS substitute Siomin Su alongside Hurek, who's not pictured here, as I don't anticipate seeing too much use over the course of the season by Vancouver Titans, only really in the case of injury or illness, because to be honest, his hit scan potential isn't really much better than Stitches or Siomin Su's, and his Pharaoh, which was sort of his ace in the hole, isn't really as good as Haxol's or Siomin Su's either. So I imagine we won't see much of him, but Siomin Su we will see quite a bit of. I think this will be one of the most actively rotated substitute players for Stitch due to his pretty impressive Zarya play and also his ability to flex off onto projectile DPS. The Zarya I'd expect to see, obviously, a lot in 3-3 compositions, and projectile DPS can come in should you want to bring out a double projectile offense, should you want to break barriers, something like a Farah Hanzo, maybe. So I think that's where we're going to be seeing Siomin Su, and I think it is going to be a very active substitute slot. So let's look at the team overall. Thus far, I have continually pointed out the synergy between these players, and that's because Vancouver Titans, or Runaway as they're previously known, I think are a team that are more than the sum of their parts. I may not have the best mechanically gifted tank in Bumper, or the most mechanically deep gifted DPS, or even flex support as well, but the synergy between these players is so large that in a team-based game like Overwatch, there are very few things that will be more powerful than that. The ability to know how all of your teammates are playing, the angles they like to play, where they're going to be in each point, what kind of heroes they really want to be able to bring out on a dime, like stall heroes, let's say, like X and Y has a really good tracer, or maybe hacksaw has got a great Doomfist for stall. Those are the kind of things when you know it in your strategy and you can always integrate it in your mind without having to think about it, without having to drill it in over time. Those are the things that really will give you an edge in the clutch situations towards the end of maps, and I think that's where Vancouver Titans really will be able to set themselves aside from more freshly constructed teams that don't have so much synergy yet. One point that will be somewhat lacking synergy at the beginning of the season as well will be the backroom staff. They've picked up a new head coach in Pajon, who comes from Fusion University, who were incredibly successful, and Pajon also worked under Aero, now head coach of Dallas Fuel. So he's definitely seen some great ideas come to fruition and will have some of his own, but he will have to integrate himself with a team that have a very structured sort of way of approaching things already, and it could be hard as a head coach to try and integrate yourself into that. The runaway core that has become Vancouver Titans will have to be very accommodating of Pajion in order to try and integrate him into the group. Vancouver Titans have also retained the services of Runaway's coach in an assistant coach role and picked up Harsha Bandy, formerly of San Francisco Shock, who previously worked under Krusty. So the expertise that working with Krusty has given him may well come in very handy for Vancouver Titans as they try to acclimatize themselves to the new means of competition that is Overwatch League compared to Overwatch Contender's career. Overall, I think. We can all agree that Vancouver Titans is likely going to be the strongest expansion team at the onset of Stage 1 in the 2019 season due to the pre-established synergy they have and some of the top tier talents in the world in their respective roles. Whereas the other expansion teams may well take some time to catch up. They are looking at up to maybe two years of synergy for some of the Runaway Core and Bumper, Stitch and Hacksaw that they'll have to catch up with. But potentially raw talent and mechanical skill could try and even those odds, but definitely at the start of stage one, it will be Vancouver Titans who consistently triumph over other academy teams, bar some very major innovations on the side of the new teams. But the big question is how they are going to stack up against the alumni of the inaugural season. When it comes to facing up against those inaugural season alumni teams, Vancouver Titans will actually be a little interesting experiment to show us how contenders champions from what we would argue is potentially the strongest region in Korea stack up against who many would assume are the greatest Overwatch players in the world in the Overwatch League. So we'll have to see how the potential skill gap between Overwatch contenders Korea champions and the Overwatch League will be. Maybe it'll be bigger or smaller than some people anticipated, but of course, we'll only know when the results come in. Anyway, guys, that was a quick rundown of what I think you can expect from the Vancouver Titans 
in Overwatch League second season starting off in 2019 in just a few days. When the season starts, I'll be here doing some analysis and I'll be doing it on my Twitch channel as well. Follow me on Twitter and I will see you when the season starts so we can make some big brain breakdowns.